In this video, I'm going to show you how to start up the computer and start the neurofeedback software. Open the lid and the power button is up here in the top left corner right above the keyboard. Click that, the blue LED light turns on, the keyboard illuminates, the screen lights up. If you haven't watched the video on how to set up the equipment first already, go ahead and watch that first and then come back to this one. Because this one, I have everything that is all connected and ready to go. Um, you don't need a password or anything to start up Windows. It will start up by itself. What I would recommend doing is to go ahead and once you get the laptop plugged into the power outlet and uh, go ahead and turn it on and then you can hook up the USB cables and the amplifier and the sensors and the audio stuff while you're waiting for the windows to boot up and that will save a little bit of time and be a little bit more efficient. Um, so Windows has started up. So we're waiting for the neurofeedback software to start up. While we're waiting for that, I'm gonna show you how to adjust the volume during a session. The uh, volume control that I had for you guys for this laptop started acting funny, so I'm not shipping that with you, but I bought a new one that should be here tomorrow and I'll mail it to you. In the meantime, you can easily adjust the volume by coming here at the lower left corner of the keyboard where it says the FN on this button, and FN is kind of blue. If you hold that down and then come over here, we got some arrow keys up and down. If you click the up arrow key, you'll see up here the uh, volume indicator came up and you, know, you can adjust that wherever you want. The down button will turn the volume down. So I'm gonna set it for you guys at about 40. And then you can adjust it up and down from there um, based on what's comfortable for you. The neurofeedback software started up and there'll be two windows that pop up. This main window here is where we have all the neurofeedback controls and the small window here is just a media um, player where we can choose different music and stuff. We'll just keep it on the default setting is easiest. From here we want to make sure that we're in training mode. We have three buttons here. It says baseline analysis training. Baseline is grayed out. That means we're in baseline mode right now. We want to be in training mode. So just come down to that button and you can either click the trackpad or click the button itself. I'm going to zoom in on the screen to make it easier for you guys. Okay, so we want to click on this bottom button here. This is training, and now that's grayed out. We have uh, four timers popped up over here, and there's four phases of the training, and this tells the time for each um, stage of the training. And for some reason, you notice they're all zeros, and I'm not sure why that is, but I'm going to reset this by hitting the baseline button again and now coming back down and hitting training and now we see that those numbers are all filled in it's 5 7 14 and 7 minutes and 30 seconds on the bottom one so we're going to go down here right down here where it says noise you're going to click on that upside down black triangle a little menu will pop up. At the top it says 50 hertz. At the bottom it says 60 hertz or 60 HZ. Click on that. 60 hertz is what the electrical systems in the U.S. run on. And that's just a filter to filter out some electrical interference. 
that might get picked up by the sensors. Next we come over to this area. This is how we start the session. The only button we're concerned with is the one that, to the right that says QR. That means quick record. We want to ignore everything else. Sometimes people will hit that play button thinking they're starting a session and what they're actually doing is just replaying a recording and it may look to them and sound like they're actually doing a session but they're just listening to one that's already happened and thus they are not getting any neurofeedback. So make sure you hit the QR button. At this point we're assuming the client has the sensors hooked up, they have their earbuds in, they are ready to go. We hit the QR button, the letters QR turned red, the three buttons that were here disappeared, the amplifier LED light has turned green, and we got the message there, it said Z amp is starting up. Here, uh, the session has started. If this was hooked up to somebody's scalp, that would be brainwave information, but the sensors are just dangling in the air. So what they're picking up and what you're seeing on the screen there is electrical information coming from the Wi-Fi networks in the house, the cell phone network, any Bluetooth activity, radio stations, the electrical outlets in the house, the computer itself, we're bombarded with all sorts of electrical information all the time. So that's what's showing up on the screen there. If we can pretend this is hooked up to the brain though. So the left side of the screen here would be the brainwave information coming from the sensors that are attached on the left side of the head. The right side is the brainwave information coming from the sensors on the right side of the head. How far horizontally those lines push out is an indication of the strength or the amplitude or the power of each of the individual brainwave frequencies. We are working with 42 different brainwave frequencies all the time. They cover the range from zero all the way up to 42 hertz. So each brainwave frequency, they go by one hertz increments. A hertz just means a cycle per second. So down here, one hertz, that repeats once per second, so it's really slow but really powerful. Up here at 42 hertz, those repeat 42 times per second. So very fast, but very weak. So the faster the brainwave activity, the weaker effect it has. Um, the session lasts for 33 minutes long. The um, song you're listening to will last for 33 minutes. So when the song is over, the um, session's over. And we'll just kind of pretend that 33 minutes have gone by. And when the session's over, this window pops up. It says, save a journey. Down here it says, don't save. Just click, don't save. This is a touch screen, so you can either touch the screen or use the trackpad on the keyboard to uh, drag the cursor around and click. If you want to hook somebody else up right afterwards, you can do that, but we need to reset the system. So again, come back here. Click baseline, the screen resets, the baseline button is grayed out, go back down to training, click that, now it turned gray, the timings came up here, we want to check our live noise and go ahead and reset that at 60 hertz, come over here to QR, click that, again the QR letters turn red, the Z amp LED light lights up, and we'll get a message, Z amp is starting up, and boom, the session has started again for the next person. So again, that was assuming they had the sensors all hooked up and the earbuds in and we're ready to go. At the end of the session, this window pops up, hit don't save. If you're done for the day or you're done for a few hours, it's good to go ahead and turn the computer off and shut the software down. So we shut the software down first. In normal Windows software, you go up here to the top right corner and just click on the X and that shuts everything down. That's not how it works with Neurooptimal. Uh, do not do that, that can cause problems. Instead, go up here to this banner that says Zengar. That's the name of the parent company. <clears throat> just click on that with the cursor or click it with your finger. That will shut the software down. Next, we want to power off the computer. We do not want to power off the computer by hitting that physical power button. What we want to do is 
to grab the cursor on the trackpad here, move it all the way to the right, and there is a Windows icon at the top, right corner, just click on that. This pops up at the very bottom left, you see an icon with the power symbol, which is the circle with the vertical line going through the top. Click on that, another menu will pop up with some options. It says sleep, shut down, restart. Go to the one that says shut down. Click on that. And window is shutting down. So even though the screen is off, I'm going to pan down here for a second. You can see that the uh, keyboard still lit up and now it just turned off. So when all the lights go off, on the uh, computer then it's officially powered down and it's safe to shut the lid of the computer i know with some uh, apple products the macbooks uh, they shut down they, they just shut the lid and it shuts down that's not how it works with windows please please do not shut the lid until the power is completely off um, it's safe to leave this out if you want to Leave it on the coffee table or a side table as long as you know, there's not going to be a glass of water spilled on it or a power cable that's laying somewhere where somebody can trip over it or the laptop can get knocked over. That's fine just to leave it out. Don't feel like you got to pack it up every time. But it, you know, do definitely keep it in a place that's where you minimize the risk of it being damaged. Um, and that's it. Super simple. Uh, if you have any problems or questions, just call me and I can solve them very, very quickly. And have fun. Enjoy.